Hi, Robert Mwando here, and thank you for keeping it locked on Edify. In episode 19, I spoke about the seven habits of a growing Christian, and one of them was growing in the grace of overcoming sin. In the scripture text we read in 1 John chapter 3, verse 4, it says, everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. Apart from individuals with warped minds, those with their conscience seared as with hot iron, no one enjoys being called lawless. God created us all with a consciousness, a mindset inclined to do good. Not that we are saved by good works, but knowing that we are free from the burdens of the law grants us the assurance of a right standing with God. A clear conscience. Read First Peter chapter 3, verse 16 to 17, and you will see for yourself what I am talking about. This is why I am convinced that nearly every human strives to overcome sin at some point in their lives. Even those who have sunk deep in sin and those who have made attempts to redefine it, in the deep of their conscience, there is what they consider crossing the line. In other words, infringing on what is considered acceptable code. And this is why in today's episode, I share with you 10 keys to overcoming sin or call it transgression against the law. But first, here are seven reasons why we cannot afford to be overcome by sin. One, sin ultimately leads to death. In Romans chapter 6, verse 23, it says, For the wages of sin is death. Number two, sin led to the death of Jesus Christ. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, it says, For Christ also suffered once for our sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. We can therefore say that he died for our sins, but ultimately not because of sin, but because of his love for us. Number three, sin leads to suffering and pain. In John chapter 5 verse 14, we read this statement that Jesus made to a paralytic man he had healed at the pool of Bethsaida. See, you are well again. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. We can therefore conclude from this scripture that sin leads to pain and suffering because Jesus warned him of something worse than 38 years of paralysis if he continued sinning. In Luke chapter 13, verse 1 to 5, we read of the Galileans whose blood Pilate mixed with their sacrifices and the 18 who perished when the tower of Siloam fell on them. Jesus in this passage seems to emphasize the fact that it does not matter the gravity of one's sin, but it does matter whether you have repented of your sin or not. Because he says, I quote, But unless you repent, you too will all perish. Number four, sin has a lasting effect. Sin leads to eternal damnation. Like you have heard from Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death. This is not merely the physical death. The book of Revelation chapter 20 verse 11 to 15 speaks of the judgment of the dead and subsequently the second death. Death and heads will be thrown into the lake of fire with whomsoever they can hold captive. Anyone whose name is not found written in the book of life shall be thrown in the lake of fire. This is the second death. Now, Revelation chapter 21 verse 8 lists those for whom the fiery lake of burning sulfur is consigned. You and I do well to regularly check the list to make sure our names are missing on this list but written in the Lamb's book of life. Number five. Sin separates us from God. Isaiah chapter 59 verse 1 to 2 says, Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor his ear too dull to hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you. 
so that he will not hear. Point number six, why we should not let sin overcome us is because sin begets sin. Let's consider the example of King David. An idle mind conceived a lustful thought. Instead of repenting of his sin, the lustful thought became an act of adultery. In a bid to cover up the act of adultery, he murdered Uriah the Hittite. Sin begat sin. You can read the full story in 1 Samuel chapter 11, verse 1 to 27. Number seven, God hates sin. God loves people but hates sin. However, when people reject his love and are bent on sinning, God's wrath comes down upon the sinful person as well. For your reference, read Proverbs 6, 16 to 19, Psalm, Psalm number 5, verse 5, and Psalm 11, verse 5. How then do we grow in the grace of overcoming sin? These are the 10 points that will help you to grow in overcoming sin. Number one, identify the sin. We need to know the sin we want to overcome. We must identify the root cause and start from there. We cannot stop sinning if we do not know that we are sinning in the first place. It is critical that you know what sin is and acknowledge it as your problem. Number two, avoid the cause of the sin. The best way to overcome sin is to withdraw from temptation. Avoiding the triggers of your sin can go a long way. The more you get closer to temptation, the stronger its pull. The Bible tells us, therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. When confronted with sin, we must run the opposite way, not toward it. Number three. Have the will to overcome the sin. Identifying the sin is easy, but having the willingness and willpower to overcome sin is more difficult. Breaking our sinful habits does not come obviously. It is a deliberate effort that we, we, we all need to do. Therefore, if you want to be successful in overcoming sin, then you must make a commitment to do so. Number four, remember the deadly consequences of sin. Sin has consequences. It, however, always presents itself as a fleeting pleasure. A growing Christian should be able to weigh in on the short-term pleasures of sin and see that the long-term consequences of it outweigh the momentary pleasures. Missing out on the momentary pleasure of sin cannot be compared to the rewards of of right living. Number five, set your mind on the reward of overcoming sin. If you endure and overcome sin, God will grant us eternal life, membership to his family, rulership in his kingdom, and the joy that never ends. Now, are you willing to exchange those rewards for a brief moment of sinful pleasure? I guess you said no. Number six, humility is needed to overcome sin. Proud people find it difficult to sincerely say sorry. They are the ones who don't see the need to identify their sins, overcome it, and ask for forgiveness. Humility enables us to have a teachable attitude. We need to recognize our great dependence on God and the realization that we are nothing unless God grants us repentance. Without humility, we cannot let God control our lives and mold us according to his will and purpose. Read Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 8. Number 7. Replace sinful habits with righteous habits. In episode 18, I spoke about the habit loop. It is impossible to eliminate habits you only replace them. If we are going to overcome sinful habits, we must replace them with righteous habits. 
our minds are always set on desiring something. We got to set our minds on things that are true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, or praiseworthy. You read Philippians 4.8 and you will find that. We must set our hearts on things above, things with a ton of value, and dump or put to death whatever belongs to earthly nature, according to Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 to 6. This is the most effective way to overcome sin. Number eight, seek godly counsel. Proverbs chapter 24 verse 6 says, For by wise counsel you will wage your own war, and in a multitude of counselors there is safety. Number nine, ask God's help. In other words, pray. Pray for God's will to be made known to you. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you in your weaknesses. Romans chapter 8 verse 18 to 26 gives us a good picture of that. And finally, number 10. Never give up. The Christian walk is not a smooth ride. In fact, Jesus Christ himself said, In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. In John chapter 16 verse 33b, the golden nugget here is overcoming. We may stumble from time to time in our Christian walk, but we must never give up. Neither do we give in to sin. Rather, we overcome sin. It is not about how many times we fall, but how many times we get up. Micah chapter 7 verse 8. So, persevere and continue in our Christian walk. Overcoming sin is a lifetime endeavor. As long as we are human, sin is bound to happen. But this does not give us a license to continue sinning. God sent Jesus Christ to pay the penalty of our sins, and we must not waste that. To overcome sin means to repent of it and not to willingly go back to it. If you find this sharing helpful, kindly leave a comment. Feel free to ask for prayer support or leave any questions you would like me to answer. God bless you.